I made that movie really as a youngster, remembering how much fun it was to imagine with such yearning that someday wouldn't it be great to run into a dinosaur and meet up with one without being eaten by it. And I just remember making the movie with that philosophy for everybody that had ever wondered and been fascinated with that whole era of the dinosaur. I wanted to make a movie for all those dinosaur lovers. Well, I was planning to make the movie, you know, as much as possible with full-size animatronic dinosaurs. And the only person on the face of the planet that could pull that off was Stan Winston. Stan could give them utterly authentic movements far beyond where we were technologically in 1973-74 with Jaws. But how we were going to get the dinosaurs to run, how we were going to get them to even be in the movie in wide shots was always going to be the old-fashioned way through stop-motion animation. The same way that uh, Willis O'Brien made, made King Kong, just taking that little armature on a small maquette and just moving it just a, a millimeter at a time. I look at King Kong and I say, well, that is the state of the art. I think it's fair to say that the process of stop animation in its most base form has not changed in any way since it was first invented. We all started to plan it out as the conventional stop motion, go motion, rod puppet, high speed with a little bit of computer graphics. Stop motion photography isn't for everyone. I think there's just a handful of people who can really uh, stand the pressure of, of, shall we say, patience. And then one day I got a call from Dennis Muren at ILM, who already had the job of doing Jurassic Park with Phil Tippett. And Dennis said that he thought that he could pull off a full-size dinosaur that would be authentic to the eye. And so he started doing tests. A videotape came from ILM, and we saw this image of what they had done, and we're just, wow, everything changed. I'm a firm believer in whatever is the best technique to achieve a shot for the film is how it should be done. If it needs to be CGI, it should be. But I didn't dare call Phil up at that time and say, hey, Phil, we'd like to, you know, replace what you were going to do on the film, you know, you know, creating 100 shots with the best go motion ever done in history with CGI. I didn't have the heart to do that then because I wasn't completely convinced until I saw a fleshed dinosaur. The reason that Steven still wanted, obviously, Phil involved was because he realized that his crew had information and experience that was just as important as just the toolbox had changed. What was developed was the DID or dinosaur input device which was a traditional stop motion armature uh, with motion encoders which would translate anything we animated into a computer model so it bridged the gap of stop motion animation into the digital age. You know I think that was the, the breakthrough is getting the technology to the point where you could not tell that the work was artificial. A main character, digital dinosaur, had never been done before for the movie. So in a way, Jurassic Park was the first movie that ever made its main characters, where the entire success or failure of the story was dependent on these digital characters. That was the first time that was ever done, and that was the risk I think all of us took. I saw King Kong in 1933, when I was 13 years old, and very impressionable. and. Uh, of course, I didn't know how it was done at that time. Uh, stop motion was a uh, secret. Uh, they kept it uh, hidden for a good many years. King Kong was the first time that uh, an animated character was uh, a main part of the actual production. What is so hard to put back into CG is the feeling of performance and character and dynamics of emotions uh, that you can get so quickly with a puppet and an animator can so quickly get by grabbing the puppet and moving it. And we're still struggling with trying to get those performances into our computer graphic characters. Ray Harryhausen was scheduled to meet me for the first time and to come over here to Universal to say hi to me. I never met him. He's, I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. He comes over, we have this great conversation, and I say, would you like to see a digital dinosaur? And he looked at that and he just said, well, there's your future. There's the future. And I think that was my high water mark for imagining what it would be like to do a, a, a King Kong of today. And certainly I don't consider Jurassic Park a classic as King Kong is a classic, but I was so inspired by King Kong, that was one of the reasons I think I wanted to make Jurassic Park. And this technology really kind of, uh, you know, changed my movie forever. And I think in that sense changed the world forever.
they got in there, king kong?